Hey, how's it going? My name is Dustin Hudson. If you're wondering what exactly this video is doing in your subscription feed, I had the channel under a certain name and then YouTube did their whole thing where it made it change you to your regular name. And then finally now we're sort of changing it to a cohesive brand. We have a website now at screenpunch.com which collects all these tutorials that you can check out, but we will talk about that later. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at this self-writing chalk text. If we take a look, we can see the text writing itself onto the wall overlaid onto these grungy chalky textures. We're gonna have these textures available for download so that you can use in your own projects. We're also going to be using Element 3D just for this 3D background. You don't have to use it, but it gives it some extra production value. And let's take a look. Actually, a while back, me and my buddy Ryan worked on a music video for a local band, and we actually used this effect. Slightly different, but very similar. What we did is we didn't want a stock font for the overlay. We wanted it to look natural and realistic. So what we did is we took a blackboard and wrote with chalk on the board, snapped a photo of it, and imported it in After Effects. And then what we did is we just brought it out into a composition, duplicated it, then we used the mask tool to sort of outline the whole text. And then what we did is we used the stroke effect. And what that does, it creates an outline that we can use to mat out the original image. So if I turn this back off and I hit these switches, you can see that I have the bottom one, which is just the original one, set to Luma Mat, so that the top one wipes out the original image. And that's basically what we're gonna be doing now, but with an actual font. So let's go ahead and start building our original example. So I'm actually gonna go ahead and just import that concrete texture background first. Just double click in that blank area. And I'm just gonna click our file, hit open. And I'm actually gonna put this in its own composition. And I just got this image off of CG Textures, really great resource for finding different cool textures and maps. And we're just gonna take our text tool and write out our text. I'm just gonna write chalk. You can do two words if you want, but for the example, I'll just keep it at one. And this texture is pretty big, so depending on what you're gonna do, you could keep the text a little bit smaller because you'll probably be zoomed up on there. And I'm gonna go ahead and pre-compose this. Layer, it's cut off, but pre-compose at the bottom. Move all attributes. And then you can double click on the composition. Turn this off so we can see what we're doing. And similar to what I just showed you with the image of the actual chalk drawing, I'm gonna duplicate this. And you could use a linear wipe if you wanted to just make it a little bit more simpler, but we're gonna go ahead and use that stroke effect. And it's easier to just find it if you type it in here. Generate stroke. And just add that to the top one. And what we're gonna do is just start taking this pen tool and masking out the letters. And between the layers, it helps to click away to make a new mask. It's probably a keyboard shortcut, but you know, whatever. And for certain letters, you can kind of go up and down, bring it back, go up, down, and that'll sort of determine how it draws on. So you can change those around later. And you can use the arrow tool to adjust these. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off our bottom one for now. So I'm gonna click our chalk two, go to the stroke effect, click all masks, and change this to on transparent. And that way it gets rid of the text, but if we increase this brush size, then we see the stroke. And right now the end is set to 100%, so let's go ahead and set a keyframe. Put this down at zero, move ahead a couple frames, and let's change this back to 100. If you hit U on the keyboard, it'll bring up the keyframes. And you could change the spacing a little bit if you want. But as you can see now, this is animated on and off. And we can take this bottom layer and change the transfer mode to alpha mat. And that way as the animation progresses, the text is being written on. And you can see you can make some fine tunings here now that you can actually see it. You can increase the brush size. Just make sure nothing's getting cut off. Though it won't matter too much since it's gonna be pretty grungy in the previous comp. So let's go ahead and jump back to that other composition real quick. And let's go to the project tab and double click. And we're gonna to go to the chalk textures folder and we're gonna to go to the bottom and there's this chalk texture that we're gonna bring out. And we'll bring it right underneath our text composition and change the track mat to alpha mat and change the transfer mode to screen. And now it's using the shape of the text to outline the chalk. And if we zoom in a little bit, and go to the front, we can see our animation there, and that's the main idea. Maybe we can speed it up a little bit. If 
you go a little bit past your animation, then hit N, it'll bring the composition to that point. And what we can do is sort of scale down the chalk since it's a little bit big. And since we have a pretty good amount of room to play with with this texture, it just sort of depends on what scale you want the chalk. I think it looks good a little bit smaller. And if we wanted to bump it up a little bit, we can go to Effect, Color Correction, Curves, or Levels, and just sort of play with this a little bit. And maybe even toning down the concrete a little bit so that there's that contrast. And then I think what I did is I actually moved the chalk and the texture into this black area so that you could see it. In this case, if you're doing white chalk, you're going to want to avoid the white on white. And we could even squeeze this down so it looks less horizontal. So from here is just the fun part. We can go to the project tab again and just sort of import whatever chalk texture we want to make it look a little bit more natural. We can take this large chalk smudge and bring it out. And these are pretty big so you can scale them down and they're somewhat feathered a little bit. Sometimes an additional mask can help out, but just sort of place it behind it and set that to screen. And that way it just looks a little bit more organic. And what you can do is either take a curves and crush it down, or you can take the opacity and just turn it down. And you can definitely do a mix of both. And then we can take some of these smudges. If you just hold down control and select a few and hit OK, bring those out, maybe above the smudge. And we'll just turn these on one at a time. That way we can see what we're doing. Take this one, scale it down. Maybe add it to the bottom of this K. The phone is ringing. I'm sure it's someone important. Only important people call the landline, uh, like the bank or grandparents. And we can scale that down, sort of just place it there. Take another one of these, set to screen. Maybe we rotate this one. and put it maybe like the top of this L, hit S, scale down. I left these pretty big because you can use them as just sort of the main texture if you just wanted text matted on the texture, which I'll show you towards the end because it's really fast. And a lot of these have a little bit of a blue tint to them just because that's the way they are shot. So you can add a regular tint to them to sort of wipe that all out or just sort of do that on a final color correction. Maybe tone that one down. Maybe put this one on the top of the C like it was just written and then smudged. And maybe just one more. Maybe we'll put this on top of the H. Or you know what, let's put it on the bottom of the H. Let's rotate this. Like it was the last stroke.
you can make these a little bit smaller and more subtle, but for the tutorial, I think it's better to just sort of see them. On the original example, I masked out the edges of these to just blend them together a little bit. And then another thing is there's these chalk spatters, which is just sort of like chalk debris. I think I actually named some called chalk debris as well. Yeah, like maybe this one. Put this one on top, maybe even on top of the text. And it's just sort of like a general like splat of the shavings. And then from here, you can sort of just start mixing them and making sure one's not sort of overpowering. Like this one looks a little bit bright compared to the rest of them. So if we go to that one, and we can either turn it down more just with opacity or use curves and sort of adjust it. So I think that looks pretty decent. It looks nice and messy. Maybe we add a couple more at the top here to sort of blend them together, but I think it looks pretty good. Okay, so that was the fun part. The next part is a little bit more tedious if you want it to animate. So what I did is I manually animated these with a linear wipe to match up with the animation. So if we scrub backwards, just the text is going to be wiping on. So if we go to like right here, we can go to this first chalk texture and we can go to effect transition and we can do a linear wipe and set the direction to negative 90 degrees because we want it to come in from the left to the right. Then hit the stopwatch, hit U. And I actually learned this recently. If you hit control and use the arrows on the keyboard, you can go forward a frame. I always use the page up and down. For some reason, I don't like using the page up and down. So I've liked this shortcut. And go ahead and change it to 100%. And maybe even move this keyframe over one. I actually have this backwards, so let's set it to 100% and then 0%. And it's sort of about finding that sweet spot where it makes sense. And what you can do is turn up the feather so the transition is less abrupt. And for this one in particular, maybe it's better to have the transition pointed something like that. And I think that looks okay. Maybe play with the feather a little bit. And sort of just go through these and animate them on. We can do this back one, which is sort of the main large one in the back. And we can go to the beginning. Add the linear wipe, change the direction, change this to 100% so it's off, hit U, go forward, let's go to the end, more around here, and turn that back down to zero, and let's go somewhere around here, and turn up the feather. And actually, if we go to the main text, we can go to the stroke effect and turn down the brush hardness. And that'll make it look a little bit more soft as well on the text. And I'm going to go ahead and just animate a few more of these.
Okay, so we have a decent animation right now. You can make it a little bit more complex, adding some different elements to it, or even uh, using a texture as the linear wipe. So that's the main idea. You can flip all the layers 3D and orbit the camera around it like this if you wanted to. Uh, throw it into a regular 1080 comp. Right now we're actually going to take this and use this as a texture in Element 3D and set up that 3D wall. So let's go ahead and make a new composition. I'm going to hit Control N on the keyboard and 1080 24 frames is good. I'm going to hit OK. And I'm going to go to our project tab and take our concrete diffuse comp and just bring that out. And that's our texture. And maybe we move a couple frames ahead just for now. We're going to be loading this as a custom texture into Element 3D. And we can change this to fit just for this. And I'm going to go ahead and make a new layer. I'm going to do Control Y. It's always good to know the shortcuts. And go to Effect, Video Copilot, Element. And I'm going to go to the Custom Layers tab, Custom Texture Maps. And I'm going to click on this first drop down and Select our Concrete 1 Diffuse. And I'm just going to head into the scene setup. Okay, so you can do this really with any flat object, but what I did is I went to the Primitives folder, which comes with it, and I went down to the Empty Room. And I'm just going to right click on this material and hit Reset. And that sort of gets rid of all the default settings. And I'm going to click on the material and go to the Diffuse slot. And if I click on this, I can load our custom texture. Just hit this drop down and select our custom layer one or our concrete one diffuse. Hit OK. And there it is. It's a little bit funky right now. So if we go to the model options, let's make some room here. We can change our texture mapping to box preserve aspect ratio, and that'll sort of fix it up a bit. Now, on this particular model, it's still stretched a little bit. And what I did was just sort of eyeball the UV repeat and offset. So what you can do is just sort of move this around. I centered it using this. And then you can kind of crunch it back down. And use the offset again to move it around. It doesn't have to be perfect. And we can turn off draft textures, which will just sort of load the full texture. And what we can do is go back to the material settings, right click on this custom layer, hit copy, and go down to specular and hit paste. So we can go ahead and click on the specular slot and go to the saturation and turn that down. And we can turn the gamma up a little bit, maybe contrast a tiny bit. And this is going to give us a good specular highlight, some variation. If you wanted to, you could do the specular as just the main concrete from file. That way you don't have the chalk in there. But it's kind of cool to have it a little bit specular on the chalk. I don't know how realistic that is, but uh, it's kind of cool. So hit OK. And then we actually have a normal map made for this texture. So we can click on this slot. And I'll include this in the download so you can grab that. We have this concrete normal image. And if you take a look at it, if you're not familiar with what a normal map is, it's basically just an image that the program can use to create sort of a bump when the light goes past it. There's a free NVIDIA plugin for Photoshop available from the NVIDIA site that you just install and you can run in Photoshop and convert your texture into this normal bump map. But this is going to be included in the download, so I'm just going to hit OK. And just hit OK. And if we turn up the specular, you can kind of see it start to take shape. You can see that there's a little bit of bump. And sometimes it's a little intense, so I like to turn the normal down to a little bit lower so it's a little more subtle. And that way you can see the shininess of the texture when the light passes through the lighter parts of it. You can dial in those settings a little bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And I'm going to turn off our background texture. We have the wrong side showing because I'm just using that one wall. Go to Group Run, go to Particle Look, Particle Rotation. And we can 
just navigate to the correct side. And then scale it up a little bit. Create a camera. You can go to Layer, New, Camera. And just as a small tip, if you hit 50 millimeter, that typically will keep your scene exactly how it is right now, rather than having the focal length zoom in or zoom out. Just sort of a good reference. And maybe scale this up a little bit more. And we can start creating some lights. You go to Layer, New, Light. And we can just make a parallel light. Maybe color it a little bit slightly less orange. And right away you can see that it's taking effect on the texture down here. And if you hit V on the keyboard, it'll bring up the arrow again. You can sort of just position this however you want. And maybe position our camera a little bit for our final location. Hit C on the keyboard to cycle through the camera options. And just sort of move it around. Maybe angle it a little bit. If you go to top view, you can take the position of interest and just move it towards the front of this. And then go back to active. And that way when you go to rotate, it'll rotate around that spot. We can move it to like somewhere around there. And play with the lighting a little bit more. Maybe make another light. The keyboard command for the light is Shift Control Alt L, which is a very complicated keyboard command, but save some time. Make that one blue. Maybe point that one the opposite way. And then what you can do is create a point light. And that's sort of an easy way to sort of position an initial sort of close specular light. And you can turn down the intensity. Just hit T. And just turn it down a little bit. And the key is just sort of moving these lights around until they're somewhere interesting. And then maybe we'll take our camera. And just keyframe all this stuff. I always like to do this, just do them all at once, which is not always smart, but right now it's fine. And then just sort of move it. I went ahead and squashed down the text a little bit more and added another light. And just as a final thing, I'm gonna go ahead and add an adjustment layer. And just some color correction really quick. You can do just the typical tint and curves type thing. And this is where it's fun because you get to see a little bit different look. And you can always go back to the other composition and pump up some of those whites in case it looks like it's getting lost a little bit there. Sometimes when the chalk is getting doubled up on each other, it can be a little overpowering, but that's all just sort of personal preference and fine tuning. We duplicate this curves again, hit reset. And another thing you can do is go into the element scene setup and go to the specular and go to the specular color and you can tint this a little bit off white. That way it's just not so 
brightly just white. It has a little bit of color to it. And maybe our color correction is a little intense. And something I like to do, which is really cheap, but it always adds a nice cinematic feel right there at the end. And I wouldn't recommend doing this for a ton of video output just because it's not exactly a correct way to do it. But it always adds sort of just like a last minute cool cinematic look as I have this already saved JPEG or PNG of a letterbox. And I like to just throw that on just so it looks slick. And sometimes it gives you a little bit more feel for centering the text as well. You could also use this region of interest, which also does something similar, but I like just throwing that on there. Actually, I just saw the new Transformers movie and what's weird about that movie is it was shot in IMAX. So it's like when you see it in a theater, it's constantly changing aspect ratio like the Batman movies. Like the Batman movies do it like so like there's a huge chunk of a movie that's in the IMAX format and doesn't keep swapping back and forth. But the Transformers movie does it like every single shot. So that was a little jarring uh, among other things. I actually really like watching those movies with the mindset that it's a parody of blockbuster movies, which I don't think most people go in thinking that. When I watch those movies, it's more like I'm watching Sharknado or something like that where I know it's not very good, but it's funny to me to watch Mark Wahlberg yelling at people. It's definitely going to win best picture for most aspect ratio changes, if that's a category. I think they're adding it this year. So anyway, uh, one last thing you can do is flip on the motion blur and go down to the element layer and flip that on. In the original example, I also had a lens flare up at the corner. If you have optical flares, that's a pretty easy thing to do. And motion blur always does a nice job of cleaning up your mistakes. Okay, so that's pretty much it. You can download these chalk textures at the link below the video. Basically, they're just a bunch of different chalk textures and smudges and scratches and backled debris. And we're sort of just giving them away as a thank you for watching. Actually, I'll show you really quick how to mat out the text like in the in-between titles in the original example at the beginning. So if we just take one of these that we already have, let's see what do we have. I think there might be a better one that will work for this example. Let's do this one, Chalk Streak 01. Bring that out. Turn this one off. Actually, I'll just delete it. And this is sort of a cool, chunky one. Add a tint. Curves. And just sort of give it some contrast. They almost kind of look cool when they're slightly blown out. I don't know if anyone has played The Last of Us, uh, which is a game on PlayStation, which is probably one of the best games or stories that I've ever played or watched. Uh, has a really cool title sequence, not similar to this at all, but has these cool black and white splotches. You should look up the intro scene if you haven't. So we can do that, and then let's make some new text, and let's just call this chalk again. And we can go ahead and change this bottom texture to alpha inverted. And then duplicate the chalk layer and bring it below. Take this bottom one, reset this, and sort of just crush it down. And that way it kind of looks like maybe there's some chalk left over on the inside if you get this curves right. Something like that. Look at the text. And that's just one fun thing you could do with these. I had an idea that maybe you could use a bunch of these and mat out like a city or something and it would look like a chalk drawn city or something like that. I was actually thinking of doing that in a different project, so maybe I'll end up doing that. So that pretty much brings us to a close. I was just going to talk about our new website for a second. Uh, basically the idea is just so our YouTube channel and the website are sort of a coherent thing. 
my buddy Ryan Sutton, who you saw at the beginning of the video, we're going to be collaborating on this to create more training videos and more short films to have more consistent content up on this channel. So check out the YouTube channel, check out screenpunch.com where we're going to be putting some behind the scenes and things like that for different projects. And we hope to have some more stuff up here soon. So if you have any questions or comments or general feedback, feel free to let us know in the comments and we'll probably get back to you because I like to answer comments. So thanks for watching. My name is Dustin Hudson and we'll see you next time.